guys. I'm Will from Testin. I'm Nor from Testin. Uh, I'm we, Jamie. We have a special guest again <laughs> today. It's Jamie. Um, you're in our office. Thank you for coming. Uh, we get a lot of questions for you over email and um, just pe people writing in in the comments. Twitter and Facebook. And we have some questions for you too. We want to introduce this as a, as a possibly regular series where people can ask you questions. Um, but to start off, uh, we know you work with a lot of tools and a lot of technologies and we want to hear about what, what you're interested in right now and what tool are you using right now that's interesting to you? Well, uh, my latest thing is, uh, is using CAD to extend our reach with our work because, um, you know, what's in interesting to me is that when I first started messing around with CAD, I tended to think of it in terms of just, uh, you know, little machine parts and working in 3D. And I've, I've worked in with 3D graphics for a long time, uh, but I've realized somewhere along the lines that uh, that for what we do on on MythBusters in particular, where we need to make large things, CAD is actually a, a bigger help. Uh, you know, the little bitty intricate parts are not televisual. You know, you're so not machining stuff to thousandths of an inch for the show. Well, <laughs> we do, but it you know to to but but we'll tend to uh, um, you know the, those those are not as um, uh, I don't know, those are kind of seen as a detail where um, uh, a lot of times, in fact, most of the time, the things that we're having to do are big and spectacular. And oddly enough, uh, what has become my go-to thing for, for doing whatever we have to do really quickly is CAD. Uh, and, but it's with a CNC plasma cutter or water jet or laser cutter, something like that, in large sheets of material. Because what I found is that uh, that by with careful design, um, it's almost like if you were, you know, making a what do they call it the the little cardboard cutout sorts oh, of paper things, craft. like paper yeah, craft. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you can fold all sorts of things together. Uh, I Tab think a, of, slot A, all that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm tending to think of of. Uh, uh, steel in that way. <laughs> so that's your so material. So yeah. you're using the plasma cutter and the CAD thing the same way I would use an illustrator and a laser cutter. Yeah, you know, or the same way that you would make a paper air, airplane or something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, instead of paper, I'm using one inch plate steel. <laughs> so, so. so how, but how did, if you weren't using CAD and stuff like that before, how were you, how were you, like, what was your process like before you started doing this? Well, uh, normally in the shop, uh, I, I guess the, the standard thing that we joke about is that our, the, well, you get rid of all the other crap and the basic thing that we do is we take large items and cut them into smaller items and then reassemble them into a large item again. Okay. And so, you know, we're getting sheets of plywood or sheets of steel or sheets of plastic or whatever it is. And, uh, and somehow, you know, we'll end up taking those to like, you know, the table saw or, or the plasma cutter or something like that and end up hacking away until we have what we need. And what I've discovered is that uh, once I started playing around with CAD that, you know, it's actually uh, I can draw up a pattern uh, in 2D really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, doing a, a 3D thing is often more involved, and you know, there you can, you know, what you're doing, you can move through it fairly quickly. But the 2D stuff is, you know, is like click on a circle and you know, drag it, and yes. you've got a circle. Basic and, Photoshop work, yeah. right? And but for me to actually go grab that piece of steel and you know you know draw out a big circle and then cut it by hand is you know it's very time consuming kind of thing that that uh, that is problematic where you know I can draw up something relatively complicated very quickly in 2D CAD mm -hmm. and send it to my local you know uh, uh, CNC plasma cutter and the next day I've got this thing that I can Basically, assemble into anything that I want. So, so and the scale is all right. Then you have all the, your pieces will all fit together. Yeah, and just like I've talked about in earlier stuff, with uh, one of my fascinations with uh, a fabrication is welding, mm -hmm. uh, because it, and and it's something that most people don't realize. Welding is literally and and figuratively like hot glue. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so except fun. you're using steel as right. the glue, and so if you think of it in that that term, 
you know, just with the same amount of ease that you could get a, uh, you know, a model from the hobby store with it's a lot of little bits of, uh, of laser cut pl uh, balsa or mm -hmm. plastic or something like that that you glue together to make your model. Uh, I can make the same thing on any scale that I want with steel and steel hot glue. Arts flat, and crafts. Flat pack steel. Yeah, it's very good. It's uh, it's it's something that I you know I never really thought about before, but because there's so much pressure on us to, to produce, you know, our our uh, what we're finding on MythBusters in general is, and 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 the other projects that we're doing as well is that uh, we've got all these skills and ideas and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, potential to, to build all sorts of fantastic stuff, but we just don't have the time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, given all the projects that we're into. So what has come to my rescue and, and, and has extended my reach as far as what, what I can make is, is CAD, uh, just, just because the, this, this ability to send it, send a file off to some place that is basically just circles and squares and, and things like that, that that come together really quickly on my laptop. And then I've got these massive sheets of things that I can just, you know, stick together with hot glue and, and I'm in business. Well, it, you know, there's no difference between a laser cutter and a plasma cutter and, and except for, you know, the fact that one cuts steel and one cuts wood or acrylic or whatever. And, and oh, uh, and I want to add to that was like, a, you know, oddly enough, what what there's sometimes you you know you look at things that are out there and and uh, you know a lot of random stuff that you see and they coalesce. One of the things that uh, that had been st uh, sticking in my brain a long time ago was when I started to look at these uh, uh, extended reach forklifts that we use on the show or other mm -hmm. uh, things like cherry pickers and, and stuff because we go out on a location and we need to pick up things and drop them or move them around heavy yeah. objects and if you uh, and most people don't know this but if you look carefully at how those things are built the uh, these you know uh, things like uh, uh, that you know four-wheel drive uh, big tractor tires and a, and a heavy frame that has a big you know arm that like extended forklift that can go out and pick up large things mm -hmm. the, f the base of those are slabs that have been cut out by a torch, like a, a, either a, a massive plasma cutter or oxyacetylene. You mean the prongs or the no, bottom of the... the, of the, the, the structures that they're making uh, are basically boxes uh, that are made out of sometimes, you know, slabs of steel that are this thick. Mm -hmm. That they've just, you know, they've gotten someplace in China or wherever it is, or, you know, in the U.S. that's manufacturing these, these things. They've gotten a big, you know, slab of steel, and there's a. They've drawn up in CAD a 2D uh, pattern, and there's a, you know, computer-controlled uh, oxyacetylene torch that cuts this thing that weighs, you know, uh, 10 tons or whatever out of steel. And you take one there and one there, and you put a, a couple of slabs that way, and you've got that's your chassis, you know, <laughs> and it's all welded together, and it's super heavy because it has to be because it's got this large yeah, lever yeah. that's out on the end of it. But they're building, uh, you know, um, big industrial machinery that same way. It's just, uh, uh, it's, it, it, it's a, you know, what a, your alternative in that case is what? It's going to be uh, a massive casting, which is how they used to do it. Right. Uh, before the ability to uh, to to you know cut this these massive with, things with, with a, a lot computer. of precision, yeah, with a lot of precision, and they just come along and they weld it together, and you see these nice big massive welds. But I I love to see the simplicity and elegance of that that design, where you know I could I know uh, you know it's no different than than the stuff that I'm doing. You know, draw a circle here and a square there, and and you've got this, you know, this this kind of thing that you just hand off, and the and the machine just kind of like cuts it out, and you stick it together. Then you have the pieces that just go together. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Jamie. Um, we we will be taking more questions. I hope. Um, if you have a question for us, the email address is podcast@tesla.com. Put questions for Jamie in the subject line, and we'll come back and do this more often. This has been great. Great. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys later. Bye.